Hi, gang. It's Adam. And Patrick. We're currently in Disneyland, so that can only mean one thing. It's time for a Walt Quizney episode in which Patrick and I battle it out over Disney animated villains trivia. As always, we close out the show with some quick D. All that and more on today's episode of Gays Do the D. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Why, hello there, Patrick Oogie Boogie Kazagi. Spooky. Super spooky. Hi, Adam Evelyn Hummel. I loved Evelyn. I know. Oh. I did that just for you. Do I need to be here for Halloween this year? You might need to be. Do I need to be here for every day of the rest of my life? I I already see it. Yeah. Yeah, you already kind of serve some Evelyn <laughs> on the daily. Evelyn realness. <laughs> well, Patrick. Yas, queen. We are just back from our fabulous trip to Disneyland. This always makes my head spin. <laughs> Listener, <laughs> podcasting is weird. <laughs> it's the podcasting timeline. It's true. Are we in the future or are we in the past? I know. We're, we're ruining the magic here for you by telling you <laughs> that we're recording this weeks before you'll actually hear this episode. A week and a half. A yeah. week and a half before. Yeah. We've just recorded the episode you've already heard <laughs> before we left for our trip. Two episodes before. Oh, man. <laughs> My head is spinning. I don't know where I am. What was your favorite part of our trip to Disneyland, Patrick? Going to sleep. Okay. Every night. Wow. Yeah. Bleak. <laughs> Just that six hours that I didn't have to look at you. <laughs> uh, what oh. about you? What was your favorite part? My favorite part was waking up and knowing that I was going to experience a brand new day of magic with you. Oh, yeah, that's fine, too. Okay. That was okay. <laughs> so if we're not being clear, we're recording this ahead of time. We're never being clear, Adam. Let's... And we're recording ahead of time because we were in Disneyland. Yes. And so we couldn't record on our regular schedule. We were too busy having fun. But the good news for you, dear listener, is that this episode is a Walt Quizney episode. Yay. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> that's, my, that's my ear horn. <laughs> it's real good. This is also known as Patrick humiliates himself with his lack of knowledge of Disney lore. This is your time to turn it around. You say that every time. This is your episode. You're very condescending, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so previously... Are we recapping my losses? Yes, we are. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> in episode 19, which was released on January 14th, 2019, we had a Walt Quizney episode in which we took a Disney aptitude test. Mm -hmm. And in episode 49, which was released on August 19th, 2019, we had a Walt Quizney episode. In which we renamed the Disney aptitude test the Walt Quizney episodes. Right. But what was it about? It was about Disney Renaissance Movies. <laughs> Disney Rene Russo Sans. <laughs> Movies. Thank you for reminding me. I, I kind of went blank there for a second. Well. Usually. Yeah. While recording. It's just, it's just your personality <laughs> coming out in your words. My blank personality. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. You're like the blank from Dick Tracy. <laughs> My face is so smooth. <laughs> so for those listeners that don't know, a Walt Quizney episode is a quiz. We quiz each other on a certain topic, mm -hmm. a certain themed topic each episode. Yes. And we usually produce these when we're both going to be away on a Disney trip. That's right. Patrick, do you want to reveal this Walt Quizney's theme? I would love to reveal it. Yes. We are doing Disney Villains. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because it's Rocktober. <laughs> <laughs> Shocktober. Oh. Cocktober. <laughs> okay. Like a Socktober. Like, oh. Are we just rhyming now? I've lost <laughs> yeah, the thread. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay. But we're doing this episode because it is October, and what better way to celebrate October than having a Walt Quisney chock full of villains? Chock a block full of spooky, ooky, gooky characters. And we should mention we're focusing on Disney animated villains, yes? That's correct. All right. Great. Per our last episode, yes. we're going to each ask each other 10 Disney villain questions. Yes. So I have 10 opportunities to fully reveal how stupid I am. No, Patrick, I'm telling you, this is the episode where you turn it all around. You're going to win this one. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> we shall find out. I'm drinking my bullet coffee. Yeah. So I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And the winner receives a cupcake. 
I want to amend that. Oh, okay. Since we'll be in Disneyland, I want churro toffee. Ooh. Yeah. I'm interested in that. A big old hunk. Here's what we'll do, Patrick. One night after we're done at the park, yes. we'll walk into downtown Disney. Ooh. We'll stop at Marceline Confectionery. Okay. And before we go back to our hotel, we'll get a big old hunk of that churro toffee. All right. Each. And the winner. <laughs> the winner will get to eat it first while the other one watches. Oh, okay. I yeah. like that. And then the loser can eat his toffee, too. All right. So we can both <laughs> have our cake and eat it, too. That's right. Okay, we're great. We're both winners. Well... <laughs> We both get a trophy because these days, all the kids get a trophy. Participation trophies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we're playing to 10 points. Is that right, Patrick? Well, possibly, if one of us gets all 10 correct. But we're playing 10 questions each. Got it. Majority wins. Got it. And should there be a tie at the end? That's right. We do the Disney Colors game. Or are we just going to do that anyway? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is no one ready? I don't know. This is This episode is a mess. But I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just ready to lose. <laughs> no, you're going to be fantastic. All right. Who wants to start? Ye- <laughs> <laughs> I simply can't remember who asked first last time. Yeah. So let's rock, paper, scissors. Okay. I think this is what we did last time, too. I think we did. It's all, all right. coming back. It's all coming back. So coming now, wait. Back let me clarify, me because last time there was a big to-do over this. Oh, is it rock, paper, scissors, go, or rock, paper, scissors, and that's the go? Right. I would go on the scissors, but you said it was rock, paper, scissors, go, right? But we went with yours because Adam always wins. No, well, this time, <laughs> <laughs> this time we'll do your, your way. Oh, we're going to do one, two, three, reveal. Shoot, yep. <laughs> ready? Reveal. <laughs> All right, ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, oh, you cut me. Scissors cuts paper. So does that mean you're going to ask me for it? I guess that means you get to choose who goes first. Who asks first? I'll ask first. Okay, great. So are we just choosing the villain that we're assigning to the question? Like, am I just saying, Patrick, here's your villain. Here's the question. I think much like our podcast usually goes, we're just going to be all over the map. All right. And choose your own adventure. I love how loosey-goosey this is. Choose your own man adventures. All right, listeners. It's time for Walt Quizney. <laughs> Patrick. Yes? Your first villain is Ursula. Oh, no. Ursula. She's a witchy woman. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula's physical appearance was based on the drag queen Divine. True story. But her personality and movement were somewhat inspired by what previous female Disney villain? Wow. I do not know the answer to this, so it's going to be a full-on guess. That's okay. I'm trying to like backtrack mm-hmm. villains. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Cruella de Vil. That is incorrect. It is actually Madame Medusa from The Rescuers. Of course. I was going, that was my backup answer, mm-hmm. but I thought Cruella looked a little bit more facially like Ursula. Sure. So there we sure. go. Starting off <laughs> exactly how we thought we would. <laughs> I still believe in you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes. I'm going to go with Alice in Wonderland. All right. So we're talking about the Queen of Hearts here. Yes, please. Adam. Yes. What does the Queen tell Alice to do while thinking to save time? Oh, gosh. I don't remember. Uh, Stand on her head. That's actually a really good yes, because it happens a lot in the movie. Yeah. But it's not correct. What is it? It is curtsy. Oh, yes. Curtsy. It saves course, time. yes. Mm-hmm. And it does, by the way. That it's a helpful hint. It is really helpful and useful in everyday life. In everyday life. Curtsy while thinking. Just constantly. <laughs> also, it's a way to build up your quads. Yeah, it's like the first squat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're both zero. Great. Are you going to keep score? I am going to keep score. Okay. I just realized that one of us <laughs> should probably pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. So it's zero to zero. Zero to zero. In no time flat. <laughs> All right, Patrick. From the movie Tangled, Ooh. the villain is Mother Gothel. It's true. What is the name of the magical flower that Mother Gothel discovers and uses to keep herself young? I think it's called the Sundrop 
flower? You are absolutely correct. Yay, yes. I got one. It is the sun drop flower. I use the same thing. Is it working? <laughs> no. Oh. Is the answer. I'm actually 400 years old. Oh, then yes, it's working okay, quite well. thank you. You only look thank you. 57. All right. I'm 40. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> that was kind of awkward. Uh, all right, Patrick, you have one and I have zero. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Things are turning around. Mm-hmm. Adam, I'm going to take us way, way back yeah. to Snow White. The first. The first. Animated feature. Animated. The first villain. Evil Queen Rebecca. That's right. Mm-hmm. In the Queen's spell, what specific type of kiss will revive Snow White? Well, now, of course, I'm thinking, is this from Sleeping Beauty or is it from Snow White? That's the trick. Okay. I believe it is true love's first kiss. I feel like you cheated with your answer because you sort of said the answer, but that's not correct. That's not the quote. Oh, that's okay then. What is it? Our listeners may contest this, but it is love's first kiss. Oh, okay. Not true love's kiss. No, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. You'll take the point? No, I'll take the zero. gracious of you. I'll take the zero. (laughs) You should, because that's what I gave you. (laughs) (laughs) So we're two questions in. Mm -hmm. Patrick, you have one point and I have zero points. Yeah, it's not looking great for either of us so far. (laughs) (laughs) Patrick. Yas? Let's talk about Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I wish we would. I'm going to. Okay, good. (laughs) In an alternate concept. Oh, no. (laughs) For the end of The Nightmare Before Christmas, who was Oogie Boogie revealed to be? Interesting. We actually have talked about this on the podcast. Now, is this part of Disney canon, or is this just one of those rumors? No, this is actually revealed on a DVD extra. Interesting. Yes. So Oogie Boogie is revealed to be somebody else. Yes. I imagine somebody else in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Am I walking you through this to the correct answer? (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to. (laughs) Is it working? (laughs) So far, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're so easily tricked, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go with The Mayor. That's actually a really good guess. Wouldn't that be a really good ending? Yeah. Okay. Because he's so nervous all the time, you'd never think it would be him. Right. But it was actually, in an alternate concept, going to be Dr. Finkelstein, Sally's creator. I like my answer better. Well, yeah. It's not the right answer. Yeah. But it is a better answer. Yeah. So in some of the early storyboarding concepts, Dr. Finkelstein was actually inside Oogie Boogie. I've been inside Oogie Boogie. How was it? Oogie. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of bugs. Yeah, I bet. A lot of maggots. Crabs. Oh, boy. Did you get crabs? I crabs went... aren't bugs, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> this is, we should move on. <laughs> All right, so what's the score now? The score is, I still have one, you still have zero. Great. But here's your chance to tie it up. Okay, great. All right. Let's go with 101 Dalmatians, Cruella de Vil. Let's do it. Cruella de Vil. What is Cruella de Vil's relation to Roger and Anita? I believe she went to college with Anita. That is actually correct. Okay, I was nervous. I was nervous. She is a former schoolmate of Anita. I don't know if it was college, but I think it probably was. I thought it was college, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Which is crazy when you think about it, because Cruella looks like she might be 60 or 70, (laughs) and Anita is like a lovely late 20s, early 30s. But Cruella was the first to rock that ash-colored hair. Yeah. And she's a smoker, so her skin was not great. What I'm hearing from you is that she's a door Delano. (laughs) She's a door Delano. Party. Party. I love her. You hate her. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're tied up. We are all tied up. And what number question is this? We are on to question number four. Time flies. It does. It time flies when you're losing. We're tied, Patrick. It's still a loss for me. <laughs> Patrick, I'm taking us down to New Orleans. Ooh. We're doing a little The Princess and the Frog, a little Aww. Dr. Facilier. I love that movie. Yes. I love that character. Patrick, true or false, mm. Dr. Facilier's first name is Pierre. Wow, this is a real trick question, but I can only assume that it is not Pierre. That's correct. Hooray! He doesn't have a first name. I was just going to say, I don't think, if he does have one, they've never revealed it. It's Chuck. Oh. Chuck Facilier. (laughs) (laughs) It's got a real gritty, sexy, I like it. (laughs) Chuck Facilier. And that has earned you another point, so you are now at two points and I'm at one. The horses are galloping ahead of you, Mm -hmm. only to trip in a moment and fall over and die. 
I'm just trying to lower the bar of expectations I, on yeah, me. <laughs> I feel like this is the reverse of the secret. You're putting out into the universe that you're going to lose. Uh huh. Shouldn't you be saying, I'm going to win this time, and you're actually going to make it happen? You're manifesting it. Oh, your energy needs to be stopped. That would involve a witch <laughs> and testicle of a newt. Witch, please. <laughs> Let's go to one of my... I, all of these movies are my favorite movies, so I'm yeah. just going to keep saying it to every movie. Uh-huh. But one of my favorite movies... The Sword in the Stone. Yes. We're talking about Mad Madam Mim. Great. When Mad Madam Mim turns into a dragon, Mm -hmm. what does Merlin turn into to defeat her? Oh, gosh. I got to be honest. I haven't watched this probably since I was a kid, which would make it an excellent take two. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would Merlin turn into if she turned into a dragon? He turns into Daenerys (laughs) Targaryen. Incorrect. Oh. Strangely. Oh. Strangely incorrect. He turns into a bacterium, which makes her sick. That is so sciencey. Mm-hmm. Way more sciencey than I would have expected. It's part of Arthur's lesson that you can use your brains to overpower might. Fantastic. Good job, Merlin. But wasn't Daenerys kind of a bacterium towards the end there? Yeah, that coin flipped over to full-on <laughs> full on influenza. She definitely had some kind of brain swelling <laughs> going true, on. It's true. She had consumption, I think. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick. Yas, Adam. Let's stop by Pocahontas. Oh, let's do it. And say hello to Governor Ratcliffe. Hello, Governor Ratcliffe. Hello, hello, hello. Here's your question for Governor Ratcliffe. Okay. According to his song, Mine, Mine, Mine. Oh, dear. What title does Governor Ratcliffe hope to obtain from the king when he returns to England? It's in my head somewhere. I know this. I know this answer. Because I think he says one title first, and then he goes, no, 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 a this. Am I right about that? You are. Okay. I believe he says, Lord. You're right. I am? Yes. That was totally a shot in the dark. He says, the king will reward me. He'll knight me. No, Lord Lord me. me. Yes. Yes. Interesting. I don't, why is that in my head, that song? That's crazy. It's a good song. What am I not remembering that the lyrics to that is in my head somewhere? You also hear it every time you watch Fantasmic in Walt Disney World. That is true. That is true. So it's probably just weaseled its way in there. Fantastic, Patrick. Thank you so much. Adam, for my fifth question, I'm going to give you an option of whether or not I can ask this question or if I should move on to a different question. I'd like to ask you a question from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Are we considering that an animated movie? I'll allow it. Will you? Yeah. Okay. If it loses you the game, then we will just call it a tie. (laughs) Either way, we're both getting churro toffee. That is a correct answer. Mm. That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) You've won. All right. In the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit, we're talking about Judge Doom. Sure. A tune killed Eddie's brother. How? I believe he laughed himself to death, didn't he? That is incorrect. (sighs) Okay. You were talking about the weasels. The weasels laughed themselves to death. Yeah. A tune dropped a piano on his head. Oh, that's right. Yes. He dropped a piano on his head. That's right. That's what they say in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it was later revealed that that tune was Judge Doom. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited to watch that on Disney+. Plus. I love that movie so yeah. much. Yeah, it's so good. It's risque a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm not all bad. I'm just drawn that way. Yeah. Jessica Rabbit. Oof, what a great character. It's animation, and it's 1940s. How can you go wrong? It's true. I really want them to make a sequel. They have been trying for a long time. I don't think it's going to happen, but I can wish. I don't know if it should. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong about that question, <laughs> yeah. and I'm wrong about the sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Fair enough. All right, Patrick, we're starting round six, yeah? We sure are. We're rounding out to the end of this quiz. Wow. All right, Patrick, I am going to take you to Toy Story 3. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Well, have you seen it, right? Oh, well, of course I've seen it. I've just, it's not okay, yeah. as prominent in my head sure. as a lot of other movies are. Sure. Okay. So we're talking about Lots of Huggin' Bear. We are. Yes. What is the name of the room in which Lotso resides at Sunnyside Daycare? Oh, goodness. This one is tough, I will admit it. It is tough. In my head, I want to say they're just called room A and room B, but I don't think that's right. I think he's in the sunshine room. That's a really good guess. Oh. I feel like I say that every... (laughs) I'm trying to bolster you, even though you're winning. Why am I I supporting you? You shouldn't ever support me. It is, in fact, called the butterfly room. The butterfly room. That's right. The well-behaved kids are in the butterfly room. Yes. What's the other room called? The caterpillar room. Because they haven't emerged yet as oh, butterflies. Oh, clever. Yeah. Good job, Disney. So the toys get roughed up in the caterpillar room. They sure do. And they get loved in the butterfly room. They get butterfly kisses. 
Butterfly kisses. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm doing in Disneyland now. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Adam, I'm going to follow you down this Toy Story back alley. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? That's actually the title for Toy Story 5. <laughs> Toy Story 5, back alley. Back alley toys. Ooh, that's, wow. <laughs> Unintentionally disgusting. And wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of Sid's dog? Oh, my gosh. Um, Sid's dog is named Devil? Or Diablo or something like that, isn't it? You are really wrong oh. about that. Is it the opposite? Is it like giggles? <laughs> <laughs> You're even wronger. Oh. What is the name of his dog? His name is Scud. Scud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have never have gotten that right. Like a Scud missile. That's very indicative of the time that Toy Story was made. Correct. Wow. <laughs> Scud. Okay. Scud the dog. Can you give me the score? I can give you the score. We are still sitting pretty <laughs> at Patrick with three, Adam with one. So really, whichever one of us wins, it's not by a lot. No. It's not a high scoring game here. We have really embarrassed ourselves with this <laughs> We sure one. have. Patrick, I'm going to circle back to Alice in Wonderland. Ooh. We're going to revisit the Queen of Hearts. Okay. Verna Felton, mm -hmm. who provided the voice for the Queen of Hearts. Sure. Was also the voice for many other Disney animated characters. Ooh. Name one. Yikes. This is where my memory has no meaning at all. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fair enough. I'm trying to remember her, her voice. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to serve it to you. For those listening at home, Patrick is currently kind of jostling his shoulders, mm -hmm. like giving me a little attitude. Yeah. Like getting into character. <laughs> I love it. Did she voice Madame Mim? She did not. Ah, oh, boo. She also voiced... Flora and Queen Leah in Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. She voiced the fairy godmother in Cinderella. No way. Yes. She voiced Aunt Sarah in Lady and the Tramp. Cute. And she voiced two elephants, an elephant in the Jungle Book. Oh. And she's uncredited for Mrs. Jumbo in Dumbo. Oh, that's lovely. What a yeah. fun career. Yeah. A lot of great characters there. Yeah. Disney used and abused Verna Felton. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. She had a wonderful career. She sure did. All right. Moving on to your next question, Adam. Mm -hmm. In Hercules, what creature does Hercules save the two boys who are later to be revealed as pain and panic from? Oh, no, that's Meg. I was thinking of that, like, centaur thing, but that's mm. Meg. And we are looking for a specific name of the creature, not his, like, first name, but what it's called. Yeah. Wow. First of all, aren't Pain and Panic more like henchmen than villains? Yes, but Hades sends this creature and makes the whole plot happen. Mm. Okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> um, <laughs> what creature does he send? Um... I think he sends Janice Dickinson. <laughs> he does. You're right. Isn't it Janice Dickinson? Ding, ding, ding. Fantastic. It's really close. It's the Hydra. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. The Hydra. It's the big snake that when you cut one of its heads off, like three more grow. Doesn't that make an appearance later on in the film then too? I Isn't... don't believe so. Oh, okay. Many other creatures yeah. are sent. Yeah. The Titans are yeah. sent. I must be thinking of the same moment then because that would have been my guess. Hmm. But I felt like that happened later on in the film. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Interesting. You're you're making yourself more and more wrong as time goes on <laughs> for this question. I'm going to yeah. knock you down two points for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what round are we on now? We are on round eight. The start of round eight. The start of round eight. So we have three more questions each. And you have three and I still have one? So there is still a chance. Barely. No, you can still oh. absolutely win. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's revisit Snow White. Let's do so. Let's revisit the Evil Queen. Okay. Evil Queen Rebecca. Yas Queen. What Hollywood star, an Academy Award winner, is believed to be one of the inspirations for the Evil Queen's lips and eyes? The, if you want me to lose, they only ask me questions about actors and inspirations. I'm playing very strategically yep, right now. Yep, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. I'm going to go, oh gosh, I don't know, Greta Garbo? It was not Greta Garbo. Wrong time frame, I think, probably there. Would this clue have helped you? Probably not. Tina, bring me the axe. Oh, okay. So, Mommy Dearest. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to lose my gay card. I can't remember her name. Joan Crawford. Ah, of course it is. Joan, Joan Crawford. Crawford. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. Yes. Good job, Joan Crawford. 
Rebecca got those eyes and those lips from Joan. Well, thank you for that terrible question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to a movie that I often forget about, The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, I feel like I'm already doomed. Oh, no. I just don't know this one that well. Uh, this is, I mean, just venture a guess. Okay. Okay. What does Yzma originally want to turn Kuzco into before she decides to poison him? I'll narrow it down. Not a llama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does she want to turn him into Janis Dickinson? You should keep using that because I will find a question that that, <laughs> that, that uh, applies to. There is no connection between Disney and Janis Dickinson, I assure <laughs> you. Don't you don't know. You don't know. That is not the right answer. Okay. Do you have a different answer than Janis Dickinson? <laughs> a gnat? You were very close. Yeah. But I'm very not going to give it to you. Sure. It's a flea. Okay, yeah. It's and a really funny some moment. Some kind of small bug. Yeah. There's a funny quote. Can I read it real quick? Yeah, It's absolutely. one of my favorite moments of the movie. I'll turn him into a flea, a harmless little flea, and then I'll put that flea in a box, and then I'll put that box inside of another box, and then I'll mail that box to myself, and when it arrives, I'll smash it with a hammer. That's right. Or to save on postage, I'll just poison him with this. That's right. Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt. God bless her. Fabulous. We should take two of that movie as well. We really should, because it is very, very funny. This whole episode is making me want to take a two. <laughs> nope, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Maybe it's the bullet coffee. <laughs> Maybe the bullet coffee running right through me. <laughs> All right, well, I cannot win. Patrick, you have actually won this episode already. You can't win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fabulous, but let's continue playing, because yes, why please. not? Going back to our Fab Five villains list, Ooh. way, way back. Way, way back. My number one villain on my Fab Five villain list was Frollo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. That is a true story. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> that was not the question. Oh, shoot. The actual question is, what does Frollo keep as a memento of his desire for Esmeralda? Ooh. I think he gets a lock of her hair. Your, your face is very blank. I, I'm, I'm going to go with final answer, her hair. He just snatched her wig. He snatched right her off wig. her head. I thought that he like snipped, like spookily snipped her hair or something. He actually gets a scarf. Oh, of course. That's that makes a lot more sense. But than I her bet hair. you're thinking of hair because he does sniff her at one point. Maybe that's what I'm imaging. And it's like he sniffs her hair. And yeah, it's so creepy. It is real creepy. Yeah. Ugh. Explains why I'm attracted to Frollo. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good guess, though. Yeah, he actually gets a scarf of hers. Maybe from her head. Mm -hmm. And there's a piece of hair on it. I love how you're just <laughs> trying, <laughs> grasping. I want to win. At connecting it. You've already won, my friend. I want you to win more. <laughs> I want more. All right, Adam. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to another movie that we need to take to. Yeah. Robin Hood. Oh, yeah, we sure do. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. So Prince John has a snake as a sidekick. Mm -hmm. What is the name of that snake? Oh, Patrick, I don't know. Oh, I thought that you did. No. Sorry. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to make you feel good. I've said that before and it never works. <laughs> not to me. <laughs> no, not to you. <laughs> let's, let's clear to that air. So many male suitors. <laughs> to so many male suitors. Mm. I think the snake's name is Janice Dickinson. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Also known as Sir Hiss. Sir Hiss. Mm -hmm. Sir Hiss. Who is widely believed to be the same snake from the Jungle Book. For sure. All these, a lot of these characters are different actors in yeah. the movies yeah. playing different roles. Yeah. And in particular, in Robin Hood, too, there's a lot of animation sequences that are very similar. Yes. For instance, when Maid Marian is dancing, it's clearly pulled right from Snow White when mm. she's dancing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they duplicated a lot of animation sequences in Robin Hood. They sure did. But I love, love, love that movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's so wonderful. Did you tell me that you had a crush on Robin Hood? Oh, he's fine. As a fox? Uh-huh. So foxy. He is foxy. <laughs> I had a, Yeah, I was like, ooh, I'm just feeling some things about that Do you still have fox. a crush? On oh, Robin? for sure. Okay. For okay. sure. He is fit. Yeah. That anamorphic <laughs> fox. Is that the right word? Anamorphic? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I love it. All right, last question. Last question for you, Patrick. Make it a good one. I got to make it a great one. <laughs> a movie we have not visited yet. Ooh. Peter Pan. Oh, Peter Pan. That means the villain is Captain Hook. I have the Peter Panzer for you. <laughs> Hans Conried, who voiced Captain Hook and Peter Pan. I see what you're doing here. No, no, no. You're going to get this. <laughs> I think you're going to get this. Oh, we'll see. Hans Conried, who voiced Captain Hook and Peter Pan, also provided the voice and live action reference for what other character in the film? Oh, um father darling that's right i'll give it to you george darling yeah george darling yes 
much like the theatrical productions. That's right. Where the same actor plays George or the father and Captain Hook. Mm-hmm. The animated film does the same thing. Which makes sense to the yeah. storyline. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Aw. So now you have four and I have one and the world is terrible. Poor Nana. Poor Nana. Poor Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for your last question? I certainly am. I'm going to pull from your favorite animated Disney movie, according to your Fab Five list. Yes. Sleeping Beauty. That was actually my number five. Oh, I don't listen to you or pay attention. I think it was my number five. Who can say? Yeah. Listeners, go back and figure it out. No one cares, Adam. (laughs) But I'm going to pull from that movie all the same. Okay. Maleficent. Yes. Casts a spell. Yes. On Aurora. Yes. Which of the fairies must use her gift for Aurora to soften the spell. I believe it's Flora. I believe you're wrong. Oh, no. Was it Fauna? It is also wrong. (laughs) It's Meriwether? Meriwether does it. Oh, I thought they went in reverse. So I thought Meriwether gave her gift first. But she must have gone last then. Must have. I think. Is that how it works? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. I really embarrassed myself, this Walt Quisney. Yeah, you should leave the podcast. Oh, you know what will soften this blow? Janice Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll just blow. Janice Dickinson will just blow. Oh, dear. She'll either do blow or just blow. Oh, bother. No, I'm thinking going to Disneyland. Oh, let's do it. Okay. Yay. Do we still want to do the Disney Colors game, or are you just putting your tail between your legs and running home? I think we should do the Disney Colors game. Let's do that. It's fun. Yes. So we'll do three questions each? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So for those listeners who don't know, there's a Disney game called Color Brain. That's correct. Color Brain <laughs> Disney Edition. Color Brain Disney Edition, mm-hmm. in which there are cards that list characters' attributes, and you have to name what color is associated with that attribute. Does that make sense? And sometimes it could be one color or two colors or three colors. Absolutely. And sometimes it's an item in a Disney movie. Oh, okay. It's nouns, basically. So it's not just characters' features. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. So, for example, what color is Piglet? Pink. There you go. Was that actually one of them? Did I get it right? You did get it right, but it's not one of the real questions. That was a warm-up for our listeners at home. All right. All right. Well, why don't you start since I kicked off the actual quiz? Let's do this. All right. One color. Yes. Heimlich the Caterpillar's feet. Red? They are red. Cute. Mm -hmm. Heimlich is so cute. Yeah, one of the most adorable characters in Disney canon. I wish A Bug's Land was still open in Disneyland so we could have experienced that. Me too. Yeah. I'm sad I didn't get to see that. His his choo-choo train. Yes. I know it was a, technically a kitty area, but that choo-choo train experience looked like it was so sweet. I heard it was hilarious. I heard the script for it is hilarious. I bet. Mm-hmm. I'm like as fabulous. Yes. Patrick, one color. Okay. From Aladdin. Oh. Genie's wrist cuffs. Ooh. My head is telling me gold, but they could be black. I'm going gold. You're right. They listed as yellow. Oh. But I mean, come on. They're gold. They're golden. Yes. You got that right. Nice. Uh-oh, Adam. Three colors to list. Oh. Sorry about it. I can't even count to three. <laughs> Flit the hummingbird. Mm-hmm. What colors? Don't include his eyes. Okay. I might get more specific than what the actual colors are. Dumb it down a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. White. Mm-hmm. Can I say like magenta or pink? You can, and it's pink. Is it pink? Mm-hmm. Turquoise or blue? Green? Green. Okay. I'll give it to you. Because well, yeah. he is kind of turquoise. <laughs> He's very turquoise. <laughs> but green, because I mean, I feel like blue and green in Disney sometimes is very muddied. Sure. Especially this color. Yeah. So it, it is green, but I would have given you blue because it's muddied a little bit. I mean, I, think. I absolutely see him as turquoise. Turquoise. And I find that trio of colors together so appealing. It is very appealing. Mm-hmm. That should be a spirit jersey, a Pocahontas flit spirit jersey. Yes. I would wear the flit out of that from the super specific spirit jerseys Mm -hmm. (laughs) collection i'm into it yeah all right let's move on all right last colors question i have two more of course you do because i went first (laughs) wow i should lose the game just for not knowing how to count (laughs) okie dokie from hercules Mm. one color Ooh, okay hercules headband oh man is it blue it is not blue, it is red. It is. Yes. Interesting. I'm stupid. No, you're not. You won the game. I know. I just want I want sympathy. Okay. Thank you. So you want to win uh-huh. toffee. Uh-huh. And you want sympathy. Yeah. 
Toffee and Sympathy. You bet. The Patrick Kozaki story. I'm basically Governor Ratcliffe. I, I want all of it. I want mm-hmm. more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Adam. Yes. One color. Okay. Alice in Wonderland. Yes. What color is Alice in Wonderland? No. <laughs> <laughs> what color is the white rabbit's vest? Red. It is red. I don't even have to look at the card. What? We're both wrong. Is it gold? Boy, are we serving humble pie to each other right or now. yellow? It's yellow. His jacket is red. Oh, okay. Wow. I jumped yeah. the gun on that. It snapped into my brain after you kind of gave me a shocked look. Uh-huh. I was shocked myself. Wow. Yellow. Listeners at home, we, we have some, <laughs> some Disney color hubris, and it is not attractive. Oh. <laughs> All right, Patrick. The last color question mm-hmm. from Zootopia. Ooh. Two colors. Okay. Judy's parking enforcement officer outfit vest. Oh my gosh. Could that get more specific? Two <laughs> colors. Could not. Oof. I'm going to go with blue and black. That is what I would have guessed. Yeah. But it's actually orange and yellow. Oh, fully opposite ends of the spectrum. Because they're talking about oh, the kind sure. of glow thing that she wears to not get like hit a by safety a car. vest yes. situation. Yes. But I would have guessed the exact same thing. I'm just thinking of her like her officer yep. uniform, I think. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, we both are trash at that game. <laughs> <laughs> a game that's meant for three year olds. You know what's cute is that we both ended on a rabbit question. We sure did. Look at us. And we it's both like, got it wrong. We both got it wrong. It's like we planned it that way. <laughs> Good for us. Well, in short, everybody, this is a very first Gays Do the D win for Patrick. Yes, it is. Walt Quisney is my bitch. Although every time we do an episode, don't you feel like it's a win for you? I do not. Just the fact that you're included? Oh, yeah, that is <laughs> that is a win <laughs> for no one but me. <laughs> Well, we would love to know how you scored on this Walt Quisney. Yes, tell us about your scoring. You can reach out to us on social media at GDTD Podcast. And as all the kids say, you can email us at info at gazedothed.com. And as a reminder, we'll be back next week with a full episode, including our recap of our trip to Disneyland. So exciting. Can we bring some of that toffee back with us and do some ASMR toffee eating on the... <laughs> just? Nom, nom, nom. I think I can say with 100% certainty that none of the toffee will make it back. Fair enough. It will be consumed in our hotel room. Yeah, I will, I will eat all of it. Shame toffee eating. <laughs> Shame. Shame. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I like how you circled back to Game of Thrones. Thank always, you. Always, always. <laughs> Hey, Adam. Hey, Patrick. Guess what time it is? It's time for some quick D. Yeah. Ooh, I like the jazz standard version of that. Did you like how at the end it was like a whispered yeah, almost like I was jumping up at the end of a sitcom episode and the frame froze with my hand in the air? I did not like that. Did you like how it took me 20 seconds to describe what should have been described in one second? I did like that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I got there, though. Hey, Adam, why don't you take 30 minutes to tell our listeners <laughs> what quick <laughs> what quick D is? Well, listeners, quick D is how we wrap up the show every week. And this week, we are wrapping up quick D with Imagine Queering. Ooh. We haven't done an Imagine Queering in a while. We sure haven't. For quick D Imagine Queering, we randomly draw an attraction at Walt Disney World, and we gay it up. We zhuzh it up. We make it as queer as possible. That's right. We basically just put glitter on everything. Just sprinkle everything with glitter. Let's just wrap it up with it that. It makes it better. Throw some glitter on it. Doesn't matter what the attraction is. Glitter. <laughs> glitter. Now, Adam. Yes. Because you lost. Yes. I'm going to bestow <gasps> upon you the privilege of dipping your fingers in deep inside <laughs> Chewbacca's head. Okay. To reveal our next Imagine Queering attraction. So all of the attractions are kept in a Chewbacca mug that Patrick has. It's true. And I've never had the privilege of drawing an attraction yet. Yeah, careful. Okay. Okay, don't mess it up. Oh, it's slimy in here. No, it's not. It's warm. (laughs) It is warm. Soft. (laughs) This is frightening. Is your hand stuck? I may never take my (laughs) hand out. It actually was stuck for a second. I drawed it. I drawed. I drawed it. (laughs) I drawed several. (laughs) Oh, dear. Okay, here we go. Do Are it. You nervous? I'm nervous. I'm I'm nervous that you've you've ruined this episode. Okay, well this this one could prove to be very interesting. Okay. The attraction is the Carousel of Progress. Oh dear. Yeah. I like it. How are we going to imagine queer the Carousel of Progress? Well, we're going to make it spin the other way first of all. <laughs> <laughs> the 
correct way. <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Because gays do it right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we're spinning the correct way. Mm-hmm. Which would be clockwise because it currently spins counterclockwise. Is that correct? I don't know how it spins, but I know I'm going to get spun on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. You get spun on the carousel of progress. Or the carousel of progress. Yes! Prog yes! <laughs> I like this. The Carousel of Prague, yes. <laughs> uh, so the easy answer, it would be a, a gay history lesson. Sure. Right? As told by a white family in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that seems too stupid. Okay. So let's do... <laughs> <laughs> I love how all improvisation rules were just abandoned. Yep. <laughs> nope. We're uh, not doing it. Okay. We're not doing it. It's just a full drag show, I feel oh, like. Oh, okay, sure. Drag through the years. Okay. It's called Drag Me Through the Years, in fact. Carousel of Prague, yes, colon, mm-hmm. drag me through the years. Drag me through the years. Actually, this reboot could be very successful for Disney. Re-kinky boot. Re-kinky boot. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. So are we doing four sections then? We are doing four sections of drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> so the first section, yes. old-timey drag queens. Old-timey drag queens. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about probably offensive <laughs> <laughs> Offensive drag queens sure. from movie history. Sure. Right? Yeah. When it was just hysterical when a straight man dressed up as a woman, because who could think of such a thing? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it actually was hysterical. Like, some like it hot. Yeah. Give me that drag. Okay. But they did treat it with, like, a reverence. That's true. Yeah, I love some Like It Hot. Maybe some Bosom Buddies references. Some Bosom Buddy <laughs> references need to make an appearance. For sure. Yeah. Okay. And then everyone does a shot. Everyone does a shot. And then you start spinning. That's right. (laughs) And then you move on to divine. You move on to divine. I mean... You pay homage and respect to the great divine. By watching an animatronic divine eat some dog poo. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Listeners at home, it happened. It It happened. It happened. And maybe Divine doesn't Ursula number. I got to get that IP in there. And she might IP all over the floor. It's Divine. (laughs) You know? You know what I'm saying? Bob Chapek, thanks you for getting that Ursula reference in there, Patrick. You're welcome, Bobby. Bobby! Synergy! (laughs) Yes. All right, so moving on. Okay, it twists again. I feel like Divine is owed her own segment. 100%. I mean, she was a groundbreaker. 100%. So the theater rotates. I'm sorry, we do a shot. (laughs) We do another shot. And then the theater rotates. Mm -hmm. And then who are we on to? Season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. I was Race. just going to say, <laughs> you're given a jar of Vaseline. Yeah. <laughs> Why? To smear your eyes oh, with. okay, okay. <laughs> to watch the next scene. Okay, yeah. Or just behind a scrim, basically. Yes, or four scrims. <laughs> <laughs> four, four scrims are involved to really soften yeah. the harsh drag that yeah. was season one of RuPaul. Maybe we see RuPaul on her own for a second. Because okay. Also a trailblazer. True. And then the scrims come down. Yes. And it's just gauzy mess. Absolutely. Of the season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. Or maybe, maybe Adam. Yeah. There are a couple of cutscenes, as there are in the Carousel of Progress. Sure. And one of them would be Tu Wong Fu. Oh, sure. Tu Wong Fu. An homage to Tu Wong Fu. Yeah. Also featuring RuPaul. We also need to include Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, then. If You're we're absolutely going right. Road. So this is new drag cinema. This is, yeah. In, in scene three. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And then the last part of scene three would be season one yes. of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. Perfect. I love this. This is super fun. Yeah. So it's actually going to be really great drag mm-hmm. before it goes to gauzy, messy drag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I am literally living for that pork chop animatronic oh hi pork chop hi pork chop <laughs> yeah and that's how it ends hi pork chop yeah and then it and shift then we, we, do, we a shot. do a shot do a shot we do a shot theater rotates uh-huh and then we're Scene on four. to every other season all the seasons of rupaul's drag race <laughs> it's just a kick line of drag queens <laughs> <laughs> and the several talented drag performers we have not been on drag race who are out there we tip our hats to you is one of them you TBD. You said talented, though, so that's not... Oh, you couldn't really... But fit. I'm going to have a glitter beard. <laughs> Won't that be pretty? Oh, just like our friend, Loring Mitchell. Yes. Glitter beard realness. Yes. Work. Fabulous. So what are some of the greatest hits from RuPaul's Drag Race we're going to experience in scene four of the Carousel of Prague, yes. <laughs> Drag it up. What was the subtitle? Drag me through the years. Drag me through the years. <laughs> Ooh, good question. I think we're going to see a lot of death drops. (laughs) A tribute to death drops. A tribute to death drops. Yep, I love that. I love that. (laughs) 
What do you want to see? Animatronics of all of the winners. Ooh, I like kind that. of like a Hall of Presidents situation. Okay, <laughs> where some are seated. Yeah, <laughs> and then the current reigning drag champion. Oh, gives a speech. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, uh, and then followed by a seven-minute segment of. Wig reveals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's one of my favorite things that happens. Yes. Is a wig reveal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wig reveals, costume reveals, yep. costumes under costumes. They're going to have to up their animatronic game if we're going <laughs> to yeah. see an animatronic death drop. <laughs> It just catches fire when it hits the ground. It might literally be a death drop for that animatronic. It would be the end of that animatronic's life, for sure. And then just before the ride ends, Mm -hmm. Shangela comes out. Why wouldn't she? (laughs) She falls from the ceiling into a death drop. Yes. On top of her animatronic Shangela. Yes. It's the actual Shangela. (laughs) Disney (laughs) has used her her rights. Yes. She's in an outfit of corn. (laughs) A corn dress. Hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) She thanks you for coming to the Carousel of Prague, yes. (laughs) Please tip your queens generously (laughs) as you leave the building. (laughs) That will do it for this episode of Gays Do the D. Thanks for listening. To become a patron of the podcast, visit our website at gaysdothed.com slash donate. For a donation of any amount, you can receive exclusive Gaze Do The D content and help us continue to bring you the very best Disney news and discussion. Continue the conversation after this episode on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GDTD Podcast and submit your questions or show ideas to info at gazedothed.com. Have a great week, everybody. See you real soon. Oh, 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 oh,